I'm going to speak to you to one of the capital sins or some of us call it deadly sins that is pride. In Proverbs chapter 16 verse 1 we read pride goes before a fall. I'll give you the example of the bamboo tree. You know many of you must be knowing this example. There was this bamboo tree in the forest and it was a beautiful tree. It was the tallest tree in that forest and uh, compared to the other trees the bamboo tree looked majestic and so this bamboo tree became very proud of itself and it started boasting about all you know how beautiful it was how tall it was and all that and it started looking down upon all these other trees and bushes that were there you know making fun of them and belittling them for you know being so short so small and not looking as beautiful as this bamboo tree and day in and day out the bamboo tree would boast about itself all the other trees were fed up of this bamboo tree then one fine day a carpenter comes to this forest and he looks around at all the trees and suddenly his eyes fall on this beautiful bamboo tree and he says what a beautiful bamboo tree this is. This is exactly what I need. And then he decides that he was going to cut this bamboo tree. The bamboo tree was flabbergasted. It didn't know what to do. But this carpenter takes his axe and he starts cutting the bamboo tree. And there fell that huge, beautiful bamboo tree. It was no more in the forest. Now, this is what happens to a person who prides in himself. As Proverbs 16.1 says, pride goes before a fall. So if we have this pride in us and we think that, you know, we are the best and uh, all the others, you know, cannot compare to us, then we should be very careful because if our pride has reached this extent, then the fall is not very far. Now, what is pride? Pride consists essentially in undue self-esteem, delighting in the thought of one's own superiority over his fellows. We saw what the bamboo tree thought of himself. We also read in Proverbs chapter 16, 5, all those who are arrogant are an abomination to the Lord be assured they will not go unpunished. Now, the pride that God abhors is not self-respect or a legitimate sense of personal dignity. That is okay. All of us are supposed to have some respect for ourselves and, uh, you know, not look down upon ourselves all the time. What God abhors is a haughty, undue self-esteem out of all proportion to our actual worth. Uh, you know, it is that repugnant egotism. It is that revolting conceit, thinking that we are better than others all the time. Now, such a person cannot be thought by God as he or she thinks, he or she knows everything. And, uh, you know, we have encountered many people in our lives who are like this, who think they know everything. And so nobody else can teach them anything because they know everything. And the moment you talk to them, you know, they have that look on their face that, okay, whatever you're telling me, I know it, you know. And then such people are not teachable. God likes people who are teachable, who can be taught. And a proud person is not a person who can be taught anything. And so that is why God abhors such people. Now, pride implies thinking we are something when really we are nothing compared to God. And each of us should know that. You know, we should know that whatever we have, it is given by God to us. What is there to boast about? Galatians chapter 6 verse 3 states, For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. So you are doing nothing but deceiving yourself because you think you are something 
but actually you are nothing because whatever you have is not yours. Whatever even qualities you have are all that God has given you. So what are you being proud about? Further in Romans chapter 12 verse 3 we read, I say to everyone among you not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith God has assigned. Now, pride may be spiritual, intellectual, material or social. We will see each one of them. We will first see the spiritual pride. It was spiritual pride of the spirit that caused Lucifer, the devil, to fall. In fact, this is where sin actually began. I would like to read to you Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to 15. It goes like this. How you have fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn. How you are cut down to the ground, you who laid the nations low. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of assembly, on the heights of Zephon. I will ascend to the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to Sheol, to the depths of the pit. This is what Lucifer suffered. Because, you know, just like the bamboo tree, he thought, you know, he had uh, everything was because of him. And he was boasting about himself. But then the fall came. And all of us, you know, suffered because of this fall. This was the first fall. So, now in spiritual pride, because it trusts in one's own virtue, rather than the grace of God, it is earmarked for God's judgment. It induces in us a contempt for others and makes us contemptible to those around us. Uh, it's not only that we hold, you know, we have contempt towards others, but we make ourselves contemptible to those around us. You know, even the people around us, they don't like us. They don't like to be around us because we, uh, people who are proud tend to be boasting about themselves all the time and tend to be looking down upon others or looking at others condescendingly. So, no one likes to be around such people. Such a person is like the Pharisee who says, God, I thank you that I am not as other men are. We read that in Luke chapter 18 verse 11. God abhors spiritual pride because a person suffering from it presumes to be good in his or her own right, forgetting that all goodness comes from God. You know, in Luke chapter 18, verse 18 to 19, we read, I'd like to read that to you. You know, it reads like this, A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. So Jesus could say, you know, that no one is good when actually uh, he was called good. And Jesus doesn't attribute that goodness to him. He says, everything good, only the Father, you know, comes from the Father. Only the Father can be said, uh, called good. So we, we think many times that whatever virtues we have are, you know, due to us. Little realizing that those virtues that we have, they are given to us by God. And were He to remove that grace that He has given us, then we would fall flat on our face. You know, oftentimes what we do, uh, we tend to look down upon others 
who are maybe, you know, uh, take, for example, slothful or some uh, people who, you know, uh, maybe uh, get angry very soon or maybe, uh, uh, maybe some other defects that, or weaknesses that they have. And we think in our minds that, uh, thank God I am not like that. You know, that means we are thinking like the Pharisees. And by looking down upon others, we are trying to show that we are better than them. Little knowing that if we are not like that, it is not due to us. It is because of the grace that we have. We should be thankful to God that he has given that grace to us. If that grace were to be removed from us, we would be just like any other person. And so when we look at others who have those weaknesses, who are struggling against those weaknesses, we should feel sorry for them, we should pray for them, we should encourage them so that they can get out of those weaknesses. We should empathize with them and we should not, you know, uh, try to lord it over them or feel that we are better than them. If you read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7, it is about Saint Paul, you know. He was given so many visions and, you know, he had a very close experience of the Lord. And then here in, in uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7, he says, the Lord gives him a thorn in the flesh. Well, till today we don't know what the thorn in the flesh was. But he says that that thorn in the flesh uh, was given to him so that he would not suffer from spiritual pride. And all of us need this thorn in the flesh because when, as we get closer to God, as, you know, he gives us more graces, as we experience him more, there is always a danger that we start suffering from spiritual pride and we start looking down upon others who do not have all the graces that we have or all the gifts the, the Lord has bestowed us with spiritual gifts. So that can, you know, make us proud and that can be our downfall. So sometimes, just as in the case of Paul, he permitted this thorn in the flesh to keep his feet firmly on the ground as it were. So sometimes the Lord permits in our lives that something that is not okay in our life to keep us firmly or our feet firmly on the ground so that we do not suffer from this spiritual pride because the Lord knows then we will be lost for eternity and the Lord loves us too much. He doesn't want to lose us. He knows our weaknesses that when we receive these graces that we can go overboard and we can suffer from spiritual pride. Now, in James chapter 4, verse 6, we also read, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. So it is always good to be humble because then we can receive grace from God because this grace is given only to the humble. And we know how important grace is for our spiritual life. Without the graces, we cannot, uh, you know, grow spiritually. The second kind of pride is intellectual pride. Now, we should know that knowledge comes from God. Uh, we'll read 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1 to 2. It goes like this. All of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge. But anyone who loves God is known by him. So knowledge comes from God. We should know that it is not due to our achievements. It comes from God and that should humble us. And we should not suffer from intellectual pride. We must not forget that all mental capacity is given by God. If I am intelligent, if I can absorb things easily, if I get, you know, very good marks, if I'm a student, I come out first, I get good marks, I get a rank, and then later on in life, I do very well, I get a good job, and I'm doing very well in my career and all that. 
all that is possible because God has given to me this intelligence, this capability to do things the way I am doing them right now. And we must not forget this. It is not because of me. I should not be taking the credit, but give the credit and the glory to God. Because were he not to give me that intelligence, that capacity, I would not have been able to achieve all that I have achieved. And that itself should humble us to make us realize how much God has blessed us with and not make us proud. Unfortunately, many people, they attribute all their success and whatever they are doing to themselves. They think that it is because of them, little realizing that they are treading a very dangerous path. In Romans chapter 12, verse 16, we read, Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. We should always think of others as better than us. So rather than thinking we are better than others, we should think that others are better than us. Not, you know, uh, superficially, just because the Lord is asking us. From our hearts, we should feel that the other person is better than us. Because there are always so many qualities that the other person may have that we don't have. So when we look at other people, we should see the goodness in them and the goodness that we can imbibe from them. And when we do that, we will see that we can learn so much from others and we can benefit so much from others. And then we will generally think that others are better than us. Now in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5, we read, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You know, a proud person instead relies on himself then on God. You know, he cannot understand that faith goes beyond learning, beyond knowledge and even reason. He, he you know, like uh, you must uh, have read or heard about people, you know, who have achieved a lot, who have done well in life and, uh, you know, who are intellectuals, at, at the end of it, what do they do? They become atheist, agnostic. They don't believe in God. And that's very sad because, you know, in their case, we would say the knowledge has puffed them up to the extent that they have started, you know, questioning the very existence of God. So they have attributed, you know, or, or rather, they think that because they have so much knowledge, because they, you know, have this uh, intellectual capacity, that they can even question the Creator. In fact, they do not even believe that there is God. And that is very sad. And we know what can happen to such people. The next kind of pride is material pride or pride of material things. Oftentimes we fail to remember that all blessings flow from God, including material. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, we read, But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the power to get wealth. Further in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 12, David says, Riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. You know, David was a king. Of course, God made him the king. He was just a shepherd boy, and then he became a king. And he never forgot that, that he became the king of Israel because God made him the king. And that is why these words come from him. Riches and honor come from you and you rule over all. And this should be the stance that all of us take. Knowing that whatever we have, all the material things, our possessions, be it our house, the cars we own, the, you know, the beautiful things we have in our house and everything that is given by God. 
You may think that you have worked hard and you have earned that money and with that money you have bought all those things. But who gave you the capacity to work? It, was, it came from God. If you did not have that capacity to work, you would not have earned all that money and you would not have been able to buy all those things that you bought. So what are you being proud about? So we must really, you know, give thanks to God because everything we own, everything we have belongs to Him. It comes from Him. Now, in material pride, self is enthroned instead of God. James chapter 1 verse 17 says, Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above. Material pride makes us rely on ourselves rather than on God. The next kind of pride is social pride. Now, social pride manifests itself in class, race and caste, etc. So, if you belong to a certain class, then you look down upon others who do not belong to your class. If you belong to a certain race, so you take pride in belonging to that race and look down upon others who you think are less than you. And in India we have this caste system and so many people are caught up in this and because they belong to the higher caste, they tend to look down upon those who do not. Now we must all remember, God does not make distinctions in men that men make among themselves. For God, all of us are his beloved children. So for him, there is nobody who is high, who is low or whatever. Everyone, every one of us, I repeat, are his beloved children. So why is it that we make distinctions amongst ourselves? We should ask ourselves this and we must go within ourselves and see from where that comes. Why is it that we stick to those distinctions that we make and we should know that God does not approve of that. Now, many people in the Bible suffered harsh consequences due to pride. You may think like, okay, what is there if you are proud? But there are harsh consequences for those who suffer from this sin. It is a sin and it is, you know, the root cause of many other sins. So we will go one by one into the various figures in the Bible who suffered from pride and then we'll see what are the consequences, the harsh consequences that they had to face because of this pride. We'll begin by you know, going into Acts chapter 12, verse 21 to 24. Now, here I'll uh, just tell you briefly what it is first. The people were proclaiming Herod to be a God and not a man. Now, in ver uh, I'll just read it out to you first. So, uh, we read it like this. On an appointed day, Herod put on his royal robes, took his seat on the platform and delivered a public address to them. The people kept shouting the voice of a God and not of mortal and immediately because he had not given the glory to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down and he was eaten by worms and died. So this was the fate of Herod. We see in verse 23, the consequences of accepting this kind of praise. The people praised him and said like he was, he was uh, God, he was like God and he accepted that praise, didn't give glory to God and immediately because he had not given the glory to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down and he was eaten by worms and died. So this was the faith of Herod. 
Now, Proverbs 16.18 states, which I have already quoted earlier, that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. So, Herod had this haughty spirit and you know what happened to him. Now, we'll take another person, King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, he also was taught a hard lesson about pride. He glorified himself and gave himself the credit for Babylon's success and said in Daniel chapter 4, verse 30 to 34. We will read that because uh, that's a very interesting also example. So it uh, goes like this. And the king said, is this not, this is Nebuchadnezzar, okay? Is this not magnificent Babylon which I have built as a royal capital by my mighty power and for my glorious majesty. So you, you listen to these, by my mighty power and for my glorious majesty, so all, you know, attributing to himself. Now, uh, what happens? While the words were still in the king's mouth, a voice came from heaven. O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is declared, the kingdom has departed from you. You shall be driven away from human society and your dwelling shall be with the animals of the field. You shall be made to eat grass like oxen and seven times shall pass over you until you have learned that the Most High has sovereignty over the kingdom of mortals and gives it to whom he will. Now, this is the voice of God that he heard. Immediately the sentence was fulfilled against Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven away from human society, ate grass like oxen, and his body was bathed with the dew of heaven until his hair grew as long as eagle's feathers and his nails became like bird's claws. Now, when that period was over, this is now Nebuchadnezzar, so he suffered for attributing all the, you know, the glory to himself. And then after that, he realized his mistake. And then he says, when that period was over, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven and my reason returned to me. See the difference now. I bless the Most High and praised and honored the one who lives forever. For his sovereignty is an everlasting sovereignty and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. And further in verse 37 we read, Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven for all his works are truth and his ways are justice and he's able to bring low those who walk in pride. So you have read now the fate of Nebuchadnezzar, what happened to him and then he realized where he had made a mistake. So God is able to humble those who walk in pride. Oftentimes power is lost due to pride and arrogance. Pride was also the cause for Satan's fall from his angelic status in heaven and into it, eternal judgment. Now here we will read Isaiah uh, chapter 14 verse 13 to 19. You said in your heart, this is what Lucifer said, you, uh, uh, you said in your heart, the Lord is saying, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. This is what Lucifer said. I will sit on the mount of assembly on the heights of Zephon. I will ascend to the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. This is what he said. And then what happened to him? But you are brought down to Sheol, to the depths of the pit. So this was the downfall of Satan. 
and this can happen. Now we have seen three examples, Herod, Nebuchadnezzar and the fall of Lucifer. So any kind of pride is a stumbling block to the kingdom of God. The Bible says in James chapter 4 verse 6, God is opposed to the proud but gives grace to the humble. That is why Herod, Nebuchadnezzar and Satan all fell. However, Nebuchadnezzar was given another chance. God is giving you and me another chance. In Exodus chapter 3, we read, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? The Lord is telling us. How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let us not delay, but acknowledge our sin and make a turnaround in our lives by changing our nature and attitudes. Amen. Say a small prayer for all of you. Father God, I pray that everyone who has listened to this talk is given the grace to look within themselves and see the areas in which they suffer from this pride. Give them the grace to acknowledge if they have pride that this sin is in them. Give everyone the grace to make a good confession this length so that they are cleansed of this sin that is the root of many other sins. I make this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you.